Hi everybody, welcome to Sprague Wood Turning. My name is Jim. If you haven't been here before, this is predominantly a turning channel where I show people each and every week how to make things on the lathe. Now last week we made this beautiful lamp base and of course this is a coral inspired lamp base with some beautiful box elder burl and this week we're going to make the shade for it. So uh, I don't want to get into this too deeply. Let's move over to the bench and we'll figure out how we're going to cast this this lampshade to make this a spectacular piece. Well, it's already a nice piece. We're going to make it nicer. So getting right into this, uh, I did stabilize this piece of wood that goes into the shade. Uh, if, if you're not familiar with this process, I've covered it extensively in the last video, so please go back and watch that. But um, essentially, that box elder burl is kind of on the punky soft side so stabilizing it will certainly help in the regard as far as casting is concerned and um, anyway once this is done we can mix up our resins and get to painting this piece okay that's been two hours that should be fully cured and ready to be used all right so off camera i just used the brass coated brush cleaned it up and uh, it's all ready to go. Uh, there's a nice tooth over here for the resin to bond to, which is important. And these are the colors we're gonna use. And this is just like for the ocean coral bowl and for the lamp, top of the lamp here. These are the colors we're gonna use again. Pearl red, pearl white, ocean blue, pearl wine red, neon pink, glitter purple, Midnight purple, aqua blue, galaxy purple, and emerald green. So uh, we're gonna use, of course, some UV resin. We're gonna mix these colors all up in separate little Dixie cups, and then we'll be able to get the paint. So, you know, again, I didn't really wanna, <laughs> since I just covered this last week, and uh, I just didn't wanna go extensively into covering this again this week, I don't want to bore people to death, but you know, I do realize that there may be a lot of people for the first time watching this video. So I think that it's also important to basically show how we got where we're at now. All right. So just like the other two things that I made like this, this is just a small disposable brush from the dollar store, Dollar Tree. Uh, anyway, I'm just going to dab this all over and I'll be sure to put the glow in the darks on the very top of this piece. Again, this is all suggestive. Lots of different reefs in the world that look differently. So this is just a good selection of colors that hopefully will represent the majority of them. So yes, I would absolutely like to thank you for stopping in to watch this week's video. And again, you know, if you've missed if you missed last week's video where we made the base, I would highly recommend going back and watching that first. That way uh, you'll have maybe a better understanding as to what I'm doing here. But these, um, this UV resin from Desire Epoxy is a fantastic thing. It just, <laughs> I really, if you don't know me, I really like mixing my pigments strong. And, you know, it, it gives you such a pop of color. It's really awesome. And, you know, the main thing that I want to really do here is make sure to put the UV glow in the dark ones on the very top to give us some bling. That I don't think looks too too bad and if you haven't seen this before it is cured with a UV light. I know the first time I did this I was like wow that's a really cool look. So what I'm going to do is uh, put this on here for 10 minutes and then uh, after that we'll be able to carry on with the rest of this and get the, uh, the rest of the lampshade poured. I just let it set and then you're able to set the, uh, the UV lights down on top of it. Talk to you in about 10 or 15 minutes. I actually left those lights on there for probably 20 minutes. Uh, when that was done, I'm just using the 40, get, 40 grits flap sander here just to give it a bit of a tooth and to clean up the edge. Prior to casting. All right, so this is gonna be the outside of our molds, the big plastic bowl. I've got it sitting up on here because I've already cut some of this shelf material is what this is. You can get it at Costco and um, shelf liner, I should say. 
And where's the cut edge? Cut edge is down. So I just kind of pre-fitted this to make sure that it was going to work okay. Uh, to make this <laughs> even, not that it's a huge thing, I probably should level this here. I don't know, something like that. And I'm just going to glue all the way around the edge here. So if you're wondering why I'm gluing this on the very top here, it's because this bowl wasn't deep enough for my liking to make the, the shade. So that's why I'm, I'm going in this direction. Uh, I will say that, you know, I still find it very surprising how, how long it takes to, you know, come up with creative ways to make these molds prior to casting. Uh, it's, it's shocking how much time you lose just kind of fooling around with this stuff, uh, trying to create something that will work. And um, I bet you it took me probably two hours to figure out exactly how to do this and to get it ready prior to casting. Having some issues here, so my solution to this is just to glue one of those popsicle sticks on here and I'll take some tape, and tape it off on the bottom. And hopefully that will sort this out. There, that's not too bad. And uh, of course this piece is going to go in upside down. I've actually ground a little flat spot on it because we're going to have to whittle down some of this when it comes out of the mold. Or out of this here I should say. So it's going to go dead center. I wish you guys really can't see much, can you? Try and center this-ish. Uh, if I was smart, I would run a bead of glue all around the inside of this, just to make sure. Yeah, I guess I better do that. I'll bring you back when that's done. All right, so this is all good to go. Uh, this is going to be the inner piece of the mold. And uh, basically, I'm going to fill it up to this level right here, the very top of this. That'll give me an inch or so, and that should pretty much line up perfectly on the lamp. Uh, the only issue I've got is trying to calculate how much uh, epoxy to mix up because um, I plan on adding different colors to it and of course I want that color separation so we're going to use some art cast but um, I need to know the level so we're going to use the rice method to try and find that out here. In this instance it's very very important that you're not short on epoxy because you're not going to have time to mix up more if you're short so the rice method here should give us an accurate measurement. There, we'll get rid of this. That's two liters. And we'll call that three, three liters. Wow. It will be a small miracle if this doesn't crack. So, and it's not even three liters, it's much more than that. <laughs> so the way this works is uh, you multiply the volume by 1.4. And the reason it's 1.4 is the airspace around the rice. That's why the 1.4 1, 1 comes in. It'll account for that. So, three times 1.4 is 4.2 liters of resin. Wow. <laughs> Oh well. I'm just going to blow this out to make sure there's no rice trapped underneath of it and then we'll get to mixing some resin. Alright, so I guess we got to glue this in place before we do anything else. Oh man, this is kind of hard to get centered. Something like that and I don't have a big spot for this to land on either. I wish this was a little more flatter than what it is. It's 
kind of concave. Right, now we can mix up some red. For this pour, we're going to be using Artcast from Designer Epoxy. Uh, if you're looking for color separation, if you're using Artcast, it is the easiest way to do it. Uh, all you have to do is wait a certain amount of time, and once the resin starts to heat up, you can combine it. So I, it, it's really fantastic for looking for that color separation if you're struggling to get it. It can be achieved with deep cast, but of course you have to wait much longer times for it to start to cure up before you can um, add them together. Now it's, it's kind of cold out in the, um, especially A, which is the resin part of this, was on the thicker side. So I initially started mixing it by hand. I was like, man, this is too hard. So I whipped out the mechanical mixer. So that's why I went in that direction. The only issue with mechanical mixers like this is they will introduce a lot of air into the casting or sorry, into the resin. So you know, sometimes you may need to degas it prior to use, uh, but I find I just put it in by the heater for a little while and that really kind of liquefies uh, part A, which is, you know, the resin part. So we're going to be using Carib Caribbean Blue. That's a, what I'm going to use for basically the overall lamp shade. But then, of course, we're going to be mixing other colors in with it. So uh, as you've probably seen from the thumbnail. <laughs> But anyway, once we get this mixed up, we'll be able to um, move on to the next thing. And one's tinted a little bit more than the other. It's not really going to matter because they're going to be combined together in the mold anyway. So there's that. We'll start with five colors. I really want to get the glow in the dark. The three glow in the darks that I've used. I definitely want to use those. The, uh, the base has a lot of red in it, so we definitely need to throw some red in this. And I'm not exactly sure what other colors we're going to use. And of course, I'm going to mix these colors really strong so that hopefully we get uh, some good glow out of them. We'll start with that. I don't know. I don't know how much. We're going to have to... Mix this up separately and see what it looks like. That should be plenty strong, I would think. All right, so three spots left. Definitely going to do a pearl red and uh, I don't know, everybody likes purple and let's do some neon pink. If you're going for a more subtle look then of course you wouldn't mix your pigments this strong. Uh, you know, keep in mind that these are going to be combined with the rest of the blue tinted epoxy. So, you know, if it's not mixed strongly, then it may get washed out. So that's why I mixed it so strong. Okay, uh, the plan now is to move all of this into the clean room, get some heat into this. And once these start to come up to about 55 degrees, we'll do the pour. And... Um, Hopefully we've got enough, and uh, if we don't, it could be a problem, that's for sure. Ew, that's a mess. Anyway, I will uh, bring you back when we're all ready to do the pour. Okay, if you're curious about the water bottles, they just come out of my fridge, so they are nice and cold, so I'm hoping they'll act as a heat sink and try and take some of that heat away so it doesn't thermally crack. If it does, it's not the end of the world, but I would prefer that it doesn't, that's for sure. We're at 55.5 uh, degrees Celsius, and that is 129 Fahrenheit. Oh, I think this is going to be messy. So I put these 
buckets on a rack that's kind of sitting close to the electric heater in my clean room. And then as I'm waiting for these to warm up, I'm always stirring them up and mix them. So, you know, if it's important to get the epoxy mixed properly. And when it's thick, it's hard to do that. But once it's warmed up and it flows well, it's very easy to mix. And messy. Look at that. Already hardened up. Darn. So if you're gonna combine colors like this and do the wait time, uh, you gotta be you gotta watch it like a hawk. Once it hits 45 degrees, it cures up very very quickly, and you gotta you gotta move really fast, or else it's gonna cure, and you're not gonna be able to use it. All I'm gonna do is take some wire and go all the way down into the bottom, and then come out and hopefully kind of just swirl these together a little bit. Looks like we've had the right amount anyway. Pour just a little bit too much. Oh man, this is gonna be a huge mess to clean up afterwards. Man. All right, I gotta get this pressurized really quickly. Actually, I'm not gonna be able to use those. If I did that, they're gonna explode. I forgot all about that. Uh, yes. Well, I've, <laughs> I've encountered some weird things in my resin casting career, but <laughs> uh, looks like jellyfish tentacles. Uh, I think that it's going to be a small miracle if there isn't thermal cracking in this. It got so hot that it actually melted the glue, the hot melt glue. That's what all this is on the side. So, uh, I don't know. At least I'll be able to throw this back into the uh, my electric frying pan, heat it up, and reuse it if I can get it off. But. Boys, oh boys, I don't know. She's going to be iffy, troops. She's going to be iffy. So in the future, I would like to replicate that look with, with epoxy. I'm not exactly sure. I mean, it would have to be a perfect wait time in order for that to be a thing and to make it happen. <laughs> but uh, I think that it definitely would give you a really cool look uh, if you could achieve it somehow. Nice clarity, that's for sure. Well, yeah. I'm amazed. There's no there's no thermal cracking that I can see anyway off the outside here so I know that this looks very color dominant right now and uh, actually when I first pulled it out I was had a few concerns because I just didn't want that much color in it but I also knew that once I mounted it on the lathe and trimmed away a bunch of it that we would lose a lot of that color so you know I'm, I'm overall, I'm really happy with the way this looks and uh, hopefully you guys are as well. <sighs> okay. Hmm. I find it interesting that it looks like the glow in the dark is mostly on the very, what will be at the top. Uh, quite a thick lip here to get rid of. <laughs> That's for sure. Now, we've got some major big bubbles here at the top, so I don't know. My original plan was to throw this on the coal jaws to try and get the glue block centered, but I don't see that as an option now. 
there is a little divot there so what I may do is drill a hole through the uh, my waste block and hopefully that will line up and it'll run relatively true it's not going to be a problem in the bottom here but out near the top if you're out too far well we're not going to be able to uh, and this is deceiving it really isn't this thick you can take easily a half inch off the size of this already because of this lip anyway let's get a glue block on the bottom just using the cuts all sanding disc to flatten this piece and to give the uh, hot melt glue a good tooth to bond to and then I just drilled a tiny little hole and then stuck my awl through the very center of the waste block and then after it was dipped in the hot melt glue drove it home and it worked great Well, that's a lot better than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I thought it was going to be way off. Good. The other thing with this, this gives us another design opportunity as well, where now we can maybe make this a, a flare if we wish, instead of just being straight down. If there's enough material there, we'll have to, we'll have to see. So starting off here with the number three Hercules from Hunter Tool Systems. Uh, yeah, I was very, very, very pleasantly surprised that this thing was running relatively true compared to what, you know, what I thought it was going to. Uh, in a perfect world, uh, we wouldn't have, we've had a, we would have had a very even rim. And again, you could hold that with the cold jaws and then use the tailstock, come up and then put the glue block on. But uh, since the, the outside diameter on this thing was so wonky, that really wasn't an option. So again, the, the, the idea here is to strip off the outside, make it running true, do the same thing on the inside, and then from there, we can move inside and outside of this piece and thin it out and get kind of the, the form that I'm looking for. You're not going to see me finish the outside of this uh, and then move to the inside and finish that just because I, I'm really concerned especially down near the base of this which is going to be the top the thickness of it in order to get it to fit onto the lamp base so that's that's probably one of the major concerns I didn't do a house update last week uh, there really wasn't anything to report <laughs> so uh, for those who are new to the channel and don't really know what I'm talking about my wife and I are originally from the east coast of Canada, the province of New Brunswick to be exact. And the plan is to move back to um, New Brunswick from Ontario where we currently live. As you've seen in the opening, we're currently living in Petawawa. And Petawawa is an army base, so that's why we, we ended up here. This was my last posting. And um, anyway, it's been very, very slow. We haven't had a showing now in two weeks. Uh, just the market is absolutely dead right now there's not a whole lot going on and of course the interest rates are high right now so that's certainly not helping so we're we're, um, we're kind of in limbo uh, the plan is to to move to New Brunswick build a, a new workshop and um, a new house of course and um, we're just kind of in limbo uh, very very slow uh, just got another snowstorm yesterday and it's continuing on today so that's probably not helping uh, but anyway that's uh that's your your weekly house update there's really nothing to report uh, i mean it, we are kind of itching to get down there and get started uh, my builder wants to start building on the first of may but we're not exactly sure uh what's what we're gonna do because while we could float two mortgages uh, we really don't want to that is that's for sure but anyway, that is your weekly house update. Sorry I didn't provide one last week, but uh, there's really not much going on. We're still in a holding pattern, hoping it'll sell soon. I decided to wear a glove on this piece. Uh, you might even be able to see the, the epoxy shards coming off. So that's the main reason for that. Ordinarily, I wouldn't wear a glove. I do wear one when I'm roughing out. That's just because the uh, the shavings themselves can be so abrasive on your skin. But um, 
In this case, I'm just trying to keep the uh, the epoxy shards out of my hand, to be quite honest with you. So once it's once the piece gets fully trued up and it's running nicely, then you know I'll ditch the glove here eventually. But you know I, I know that there's some negativity attached to it, but uh, you know as long as that glove stays on the operator side of the tool rest, there should never be any issues here. And of course, the great thing about doing these voiceovers is we can talk about last week's project. Uh, I, d I should mention that I'm actually saving a lot of these shavings instead of having them go to the floor and then we'll be able to uh, recast them later on. But last week's video was, was quite popular. Thanks to those who stopped in to watch that. And again, I will link that at the end of this video for those who haven't seen it. But uh, well received. Uh, in the last 10 videos, it's actually doing quite well. So thank you for those who have stopped in to watch that. Uh, really happy that I can save some of these shavings as well. And um, they also give a really cool look when they're recasted later on. Something that I didn't think was going to be a thing for me. But uh, anyway, i got quite a few bags of these now. So maybe we'll see a, another shavings um, project coming up here in the, in the future. Just picking some off the floor there. Uh, anyway, uh, as, as long as they, as long as we don't get any wood in them, then I, I like to use them. So I've been asked to cover finishes and, 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 you know, I'm certainly no expert in this field by any stretch of the imagination, but you know, over the years I have used a number of finishes and, and I can basically talk on that. So I recognized a very long time ago that shiny sells. So if, if you're a wood turner and you're trying to boost your sales, then I would recommend using shiny finishes that I use each and every week, like the Waterlux. In the past, it used to be general finishes, sellable finish. And um, I just personally find that if, if I'm at, say, a show, which I don't do anymore, and I've got, say, 200 bowls and 100 of them are matte finished and 100 of them are shiny finished at the end of that show i'm going to go home with most of the matte finished bowls unless it is strictly a straight up utility item um, that's just been my experience with with shiny finishes and sales uh, i really i like to call it the bling <laughs> uh, ironically you know if you've got a table, I don't think that a table should be shiny. I think that it should be not matte, but at the most, maybe a, a semi-gloss. And then, of course, when you put, say, a, you know, a bowl on there that's nice and shiny, well, that's really going to pop on that table. The other reason why I use these, these finishes is because they protect better. Uh, if you're just using a straight-up mineral oil or beeswax or a combination of the two, don't get me wrong, those finishes are fine for strictly utility items, but they are constant maintenance finishes. And if you don't do the maintenance on them, i.e. you put them in the sink and you wash them and you don't oil your bowl, then the next time you pull that bowl out to use it, it may actually have a split in it or, or crack. So, you know, I like to use protective finishes. And again, you know, when you come to somebody's house, and you see that shining bowl sitting on that table, it just draws your eye right to it. If I didn't know any better, I'd say I'm turning a bell. So, in the end, I decided to leave that little bell feature on the very, what will be the bottom of this lampshade. I think that it just adds another dimension to it. And it's kind of one of those happy accidents that happen. <laughs> so uh, I definitely like the look of it better than just being a straight bowl shape for this, for this lampshade. I know that there may be some people that wanted to see more wood in this. But, you know, I'm really starting to get low on this box elder burl. And uh, the other issue was trying to incorporate it somehow and to figure out exactly 
how to make it look good. It's, it, you know, I do have some that I could have thrown in here, but I, I was trying to stay away from hard edges and straight edges, so that's why I didn't put any more in there. And besides, it's a, it's a shade, so, I mean, it's not open at the top, and I, I basically want this to, uh, it, this almost resembles a Tiffany lamp shade, shape, and that's, you know, in the end is probably what I was going for. I was debating on using more of a bucket, smaller bucket, large bucket type thing that would have gave us a, a total different look as far as the shade is concerned. But ultimately I went with this shape here. I like to leave those real-time clips in when I can. Uh, you know, unfortunately, a lot of times the videos are just way too long for me to leave a bunch of those in there. Uh, but I know that a lot of people certainly appreciate them, and especially for the non-turners to get a sense and a feel for basically how fast things are going and um, the noises and the sounds that are associated with the lathe, which I know a lot of people really like to hear as well. Um, anyway uh we're gonna soon pull this off the lathe and have a look at it and try to figure out exactly if it's what we want and how we need to keep going here to to finish it off don't forget to measure so what do you think <laughs> uh we got a ways to go here yet well we're getting we're getting close anyway i really like this bell feature so that is staying We'll see once the finish goes on, maybe I'll change my mind. Uh, this will sit down probably about another, I'll say three quarters of an inch from where it is now. And the reason for that is because there's a little nut that goes on the very top of these, uh, these lamps. So there it is there. And I've got it screwed out a bit too, just for measuring it. If I get this to go back on here correctly. That'll do enough. So my only real issue is, like I said, this is going to be down to about probably here. But the top, this little nut affair, that's all you've got for threads. So, you know, you gotta get at least a couple of turns on it. So there's your measurement as far as what the bottom of this, the thickness is gonna be. And my only real problem with that is it looks more and more like it's gonna be going into resin here. So do I leave this a little bit thicker on the very bottom up here? and then drill a hole down so that basically this can sit down inside of it uh, not too far of course and then that way at least you get a little bit more beef up here as far as where this nut is concerned I suppose that you could probably drill down through the very top of this as well and recess this little nut that certainly could happen uh, but anyway we still got to thin this out a little bit on the bottom and then we'll be able to move on to sanding. See, there's a couple of holes there, voids that we'll have to deal with. But other than that, I mean, it's not a whole lot of resin in this piece, or sorry, uh, wood in this piece, but what is there is nice. So one of the main thought process as to why I even put wood in this was so that uh, where that little nut was clamping down on the shade, it would clamp down on the wood and not resin. I would prefer that. I don't think that there's going to be an issue with the resin, but you know, you never know. Whereas that stabilized wood would certainly um, be probably a better candidate for that. So that was my my thinking. And of course, with that glow in the dark sitting on the top, if this lamp is getting any amount of UV light, when the lights go out, it should glow quite nicely. That's the that's the plan. And to be perfectly honest with you, I'm doing this voiceover without this being done all of the way so 
I don't even know how well this shade glows yet. <laughs> so we'll, we'll find that out after I do this voiceover near the end of the video. So finally on to sanding, these are the three and a half inch double discs from sandpaper.ca. And uh, this piece was sanded from 60 to 800. Uh, did not do any of the uh, epoxy coats this week. Certainly could have. So, you know, I did the sanding and then I looked at this again and I said, well, I want to thin out where that waste block is and hopefully get a better measurement up there and whittle away a little more if I need to. But of course, you know, I still have to drill a hole and make sure that the shade will actually fit on the base correctly. Uh, so anyway, I thought that I would thin out the waste block at the top and hopefully whittle down enough material and get a measurement on that to make sure that that isn't going to be a problem. But of course, it, it it's always difficult to do when you're right up in the middle of this piece where it's being held by a block. So you, you can't really get a measurement in there to make sure that it's going to be uh, good to go. So that is a triple E buffing compound. So we're going to buff this piece. And of course, once the buffing is completed, we'll use the denatured alcohol and uh, get our first coat of finish on this. Uh, this really pops quite well when the finish goes on. And uh, I absolutely really like the look of this and ho hopefully you guys do as well. Good reason to clean up your uh, your pieces with the uh, denatured alcohol. Get rid of any of that buffing compound. I didn't talk to the camera, uh, but this is Waterlux Gloss. Great finish, by the way. Well, there you have it. Uh, very red and purple dominated. There are actually a lot of bubbles in this. And you know, I don't, again, I don't mind it because it's like an ocean themed thing, but that's just through the fact that that epoxy was starting to cure up when it went into the pressure pot. And I just didn't have enough time, I don't think. It was probably almost set when I pressurized it. So, uh, but regardless, I mean, I really love this piece. I think that uh, it's absolutely beautiful, to be quite honest with you. Uh, I do wish that there was more burl on the top. Uh, really going to be interesting to see what this is going to look like from the top when it's all done. But, you know, we'll have to wait until the glue block comes off. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think, and we'll see you tomorrow for the second coat. Hopefully the last coat. Well, good morning. I just wanted to point something out before um, I put the next coat of finish on. This thing looks fantastic, except for the wood. All of the, uh, what will be the, the glass area, if you will, the resin area. It looks like it's perfect, uh, but of course the wood is dry. And I don't know if the camera yet should be able to see that in there. So that's the only reason why it's getting another coat. And unfortunately, that might need three coats. That puts us in a little bit of trouble as far as getting the top done, because that needs to be perfectly done for this video as well. Oh well, let's see how we make out. Open two coats to do it. Back again with the Triple E buffing compound. This will knock down any little lumps and bumps that are in there and uh, hopefully get rid of any cat hair if you have that on the surface of your project as well. It's always an issue when you have cats. And don't forget that denatured alcohol. All right, this is the second coat of Waterlux Gloss. And in regards to finishes, you know, again, if, if it's an easy finish to do, Chances are that protection is not going to be there like this Waterlux provides. Well, kind of looks the same. Not much change at all, really. That area right down in there should glow a lot. Too bad it's going to be upside down, but there's a lot of it on the top side here, too. Uh, the other thing that I did notice as well is right here we got ourselves a couple of bubbles like large bubbles so i don't know it's kind of neat i might leave it i might drill a little hole and inject it 
something, I don't know. We'll have to see once, uh, once we're able to do the bottom on this, which will be the top. It's kind of reversed everything. All right, well, if there's a third coat, I will do it the same as this. If not, we'll see you when we're doing the top. That's different, huh? So after three coats of finish, uh, it's now time to free this from the waste block. And of course, I'm using the parting tool for that. Again, you know, typically when I part these off, I leave about an inch and a half of material. Depends really on the size of the piece uh, before I decide to either snap it off or, or cut it off with a handsaw. Now on to the vacuum chuck. I think it only took about three attempts to get this to, to run correctly. Yeah, that's not bad actually. <laughs> So I'm going to use the bowl gouge to get rid of the majority of the wood and the hot melt glue that's there. And then you'll see me switch out to the Hercules and thin this piece out a little more. I did measure this prior to measure the thickness prior to going on here. And it's still a little thick for my liking. And uh, so I decided to take it down a little more. But I... Uh, I exposed a bubble that I didn't even really know was there and actually it's it's not so much a bubble that that's hot melt glue from where I stuck that piece down inside of the uh, the plastic bowl so that was actually quite a large hole underneath of it <laughs> so I had to actually take it off again and use the UV resin to fill in that spot couldn't really get in there so I had to use a typhoon bit here to clean out a little bit of an area uh, I wasn't real happy with the kind of the rounded over edges, so I decided to use this, which was almost a disaster right there. Uh, anyway, it's it's very grabby. Uh, not a big deal. I, was, I had enough material there to turn it away. So in reality, when the UV resin went in this time around, it actually helped it look more normal because it wasn't just kind of one little blob area. I think I do end up sanding a lot of it away, though. But, you know, it's just one of those things that thing could have skated right up the side of this thing and, oh, it would not have been good. So there's the UV glow-in-the-dark resin again from Designer Epoxy. So I managed to get it centered again relatively well back on the vacuum chuck. So we're just going to trim this up and then we'll uh, proceed to sanding. Now, when you're sanding these pieces, uh, you know, essentially you've got a finished surface. So it's important that when you do start sanding that, you know, I'll go a certain amount of distance. And then the next grit, I'll go just a little bit further. And then the next grit, I'll go a little bit further. And then hopefully when you're all done, that will all blend in and it'll look, you know, you won't be able to tell that there's any seam at all. Once, it, once that's done again with the triple E buffing compound, just to take out any more fine little scratches that might be left, o left over in this piece. And you know, just like the rest of this piece, it was sanded to 800. And uh, absolutely love the look of this so far, but we still gotta fit it to the lamp yet. So this is another coat of Waterlux, and I did clean the surface with denatured alcohol prior to this. I don't know why this camera did not want to cooperate on the focus here, but anyway, it's it's not in there. It's not focusing correctly. Uh, something that happens from time to time. Well, there you go. Uh, lots of glow in the dark here. Actually, a couple of bubbles that I left there that I think kind of look neat. So I didn't want to mess with them. It is super windy out today. I don't know if the camera's picking that up or not. But um, unfortunately, we had that great big hole that I had to fill. So that's what all this is. And it actually blends in quite nicely. So I'm, I'm happy with that. Anyway, uh, I got out here at 7 o'clock this morning. Plan on putting on another coat probably this evening if we don't lose power. <laughs> and... Um, We'll be able to finish this up. Anyway, all I'm going to do is buff it again with the Tripoli and then put on another coat of finish after using the denatured alcohol. We'll see you when we're drilling the hole in this. 
That'll be the most terrifying part, <laughs> part of this. And we'll see you then. Okay, so now we gotta cut some, well, we gotta call a hole in this so it'll fit on our lamp base, if you will. But underneath, there, there's like a pressed metal and it's kind of pushed up in the air. So I'm just cutting a little recess for that to fit in there so that the lampshade will sit flat down on the, the yoke assembly. That's what I'll call it anyway. And I'm gonna recess the nut a little bit. That's the size that we're shooting for here. Uh, I do actually have to drill this a little bit deeper afterwards, but it's not a real big deal. This, the, the thickness on this was about three eighths of an inch in diameter, somewhere around there. Could have gone to a quarter of an inch, but I was comfortable at three eighths, uh, but certainly quarter inch would have been the max. So we'll get this here in a second. So there's the nut the way it fits. And of course, all we got to do now is drill the through hole and we'll be able to get a look at this in the dark to see if it actually glows because we haven't done that yet. I only use the, uh, the UV lights on this for like maybe a minute or so. tell down in the shade further down by the rim of it that some of that glow in the dark is down there too so that's really cool that's super nice and of course the base with the cave that's very cool too all right let's go up in the light and talk about this Hopefully this will uh, spin on my turntable, but it might be too heavy. All right, so here we are in the dark, as per normal. <laughs> but uh, that's what it looks like. That's a 60 watt LED light. I wouldn't use anything but LED lights in here because uh, you certainly don't want this to get hot. LED lights will get warm, but they won't get hot enough to damage the, uh, the epoxy. Uh, it's a lot more, it's a lot brighter than I thought it was going to be, that's for sure. Uh, I do have a blue light, so let's try that. That's a blue LED light. Somebody commented last week, I'm sorry, I can't remember who you were, that they thought blue LED lights would emit enough UV to light things up, so let's try that. So there's your blue LED light, and to be honest with you, I think I like that better. That's kind of kind of what I envisioned that this would look like you know it's just something to have a little bit of mood lighting in the background um, I don't see any of the UV resin I don't see it really lighting up so maybe you need a specific bulb for that uh, so anyway if you have that information please put it in the comments down below and um, that way uh, the person who has bought this can actually uh, put the proper bulb in it to get things lit up. Uh, anyway, I think it's very cool. Let's turn the lights on and just finish this up. It's funny, it looks totally different with, uh, with the light on. I mean, totally different for sure. Uh, you know, this was a fun thing to do, uh, but I'll be honest with you, you know, to, to really, to get your money back with all the labor that's involved with this, it's, it'd be tough. Like. Uh, I don't know if there's very many people that would spend, you know, two to three thousand dollars on a lamp. I'm, I'm sure they're out there, but you know, if you look at how much labor is involved involved in the base and how much labor is involved in the shade, I mean, that's that's where I probably would be on this a piece like this. Um, anyway, let me know in the comments what you think about it. I think it's really cool. Uh, let me know about this little bell feature. That's what I'm calling it now. <laughs> And uh, I did have to drill this with a three quarter inch uh, Forstner bit a little deeper on the top so that the nut would fit down a little better because uh, I just, I could just get a little bit, but not, not enough threads that I'm comfortable with. So uh, yeah, that's it. I don't really know um, much more to say on this. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this, this two video series that, that I did on this. Uh, the the lamp base 
is certainly a lot easier to do than say <laughs> the uh, the shade I think it is the, the unique thing about the shade is that from a holding aspect as far as holding things on the lathe and finishing pieces like this this is the challenging part about it luckily enough I've got a vacuum chuck to do that uh, but once you drill the hole in the top of that well you can't do it anymore and this actually does need another coat of finish so what I'm going to do is now that this is perfectly round I can put it in the cold jaws and I can put the last coat on the very top here uh, and it's it's just the wood the wood looks like it needs another coat of finish and then it's ready to go to its new home and like I said this piece is sold anyway let me know in the comments what you think about this week's video uh, thanks for stopping in I really do appreciate it and uh, for next week the plan is to go back to space so that's where we're going to be next week so please come on back all right well that's it take care stay safe don't forget the bell please share my videos with your friends and uh, don't forget to put designer epoxy in the comments down below to be entered into the next giveaway at 130,000 subscribers when we get there all right see you next week